Within this video, we're going to go ahead and jump into Sketchfab and bring in this book that you see right here. It is free. The link will be down in the description and set up its textures and materials here inside of Unreal. Now, this is going to be a very, very, very basic setup. If you want something a bit more complex, go ahead and check out our creating material or material instance with textures video. And that link will be in the description below. So first of all, let's go ahead and jump over to Sketchfab and grab this model. So by following the link inside the description, you'll be able to come to here and you'll be able to find said book. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit. What you're looking for is this download 3D model button. I'll go ahead and just click on that. And then what we're going to actually download is the FBX. So this first little download button right here, go ahead and give a click there. Go ahead and download it to your local machine. We're good to go. So next we want to go ahead and open this up. So if I bring over my downloads, what I'm going to do is right click on this and just go ahead and say extract all. I'm going to say extract. Perfect. Now inside of here, there are two folders. So let's open those up and we have our source and we have our texture. So inside the source, we have the actual FBX and inside of the texture, we have the actual texture. Now this one just has diffuse or albedo, whatever you want to call it. There's no shading. There's no normal map. There's nothing fancy. So if you're looking for more information on creating material that has a lot more information in it, go ahead and check out the creating a simple material video. And this link will be in the description as well. And we'll give you much more information on what you need to do and how to think about each one of the textures that might be coming over from one of your actual Sketchfab pieces that you're downloading. All right, so let's go ahead and start importing these pieces into Unreal next. So here inside of Unreal, let's go ahead and start bringing those pieces in. So I'm going to go ahead and just bring this window over because it's actually really easy to go ahead and just open up the content browser down here below and we'll, we can drop these things in here. Now I have this organized. I do have a static mesh folder. I'm going to create one extra folder in here just to make this a little bit easier to organize. So you can see this. I'm just going to call this one book. And instead of here, it's going to open that up. I'm just going to start dragging and dropping these pieces in. So inside of our book supplies, double click on that. Inside of our source, let's go ahead and grab that FBX. I'm just going to drag and drop this into here like so. And we're going to get this little pop up. And what it's going to ask is if we want to change any of the initial settings. So I'm going to hit this restore default up here just so that I have the same default settings as everybody else, hopefully. And here we have this generate missing collision. We'll go ahead and leave that on because we can turn on physics later. It could be a whole lot of fun. Um, and then down here below under this material section, that says search location. I'm actually going to say do not search, but I do want you to go ahead and create a new material. So I'm going to go ahead and say import. And what that has done is it's created a new static mesh, the book, and an actual material for it. Now, we do need the texture as well. So let's go back over here and let's go back into our supplies, go into our texture folder and grab that texture. Go ahead and just drag that in there. And you can see, go ahead and click in here. There we go. So we have our texture, our object, and then we have our material. So now we just need to start kind of putting all these pieces together. So I want to take one moment to talk about putting these pieces together before we actually do it. And that other video that is linked in there where we're talking about much more complicated materials, what we were doing was we we're actually just dragging and dropping materials onto the objects in the world. That works okay for some things. For objects like books that I'm gonna be dragging into the scene over and over and over again, I definitely don't wanna do that method. Instead, what I really wanna do is make sure that the material that is on this asset right here is set up and ready to go. Otherwise I have to drag that material onto it every single time. And nobody wants to do that. We want to just be able to drag the object in and it'll have the material already on it. So let's go ahead and set up that material. So to make that happen, let's make sure that this has the correct material on it. So this S book should have this M book material on it. So if we double click on this, it'll open up the actual static mesh editor. And you can see there's nothing on this book. It's totally white. Um, but if we look over here in the top right, you can see that, yay, it does actually have that M book on it. So perfect. Let's start to manipulate this material. So we can do that very easily by either A, double clicking on it here, or B, we can actually double click on it down here. So it doesn't really matter which one you do. I'm going to go ahead and just put this up here. I'll just double click on this one. It opens up the material. Now inside the material, we have the actual uh, final output that we have over here. And then this one is actually connected up to the base color. And I don't want a color in there. I don't want that white. I want that actual texture. So I'm going to select this object and just go ahead and delete it, or node rather. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to hold control and hit spacebar. That'll open this up. And I want to navigate to wherever my book happens to be. In this case, it's already ready to go. And I can grab my texture, and I'm just going to simply drag and drop it here into the graph, like so. And I'm going to take the RGB pin, and I'm going to connect that to the base color. And instantly, we can actually see that, hey, this has a texture on it. Now, again, I'm not going to worry about all of the other pins that are on here. Check out that video in the description below if you want much more detailed information. So now that this is set up, let's go ahead and just do save. 
And if we take a look back at the book, we can see we have a tab up here that has the book in it. We'll say, yay, this one now has that actual material on it. So cool, let's go ahead and save that one. So now that we've actually got all of this set up, we have the texture in here in the material. The material is now attached to the actual book. If we go back and look at the world, check it out. It has actually updated these books in here, which is excellent. That's exactly what we want. So if we actually rotate this, we can actually set these up and I'll grab that one. I'll rotate this one right here. And if I go ahead and play inside of my world, I'm just going to right click in here and just say play from here. Ta da! There are my books. And they do have collision on them, so you'll see that my character actually does stand on them, which is kind of cool. Um, one last little thing that I would love to do, I think this is always just a lot of fun. I'm going to go ahead and quit the game real quick, select one of these, All right? Go ahead and zoom in on it using the F key. And over here inside of the details panel, if we scroll down till we actually find, oh, I want to set this on all. Sorry. So we're going to make sure our filter is set on all right here. So we're going to come down here, and what I'm going to look for is the physics. And I want to go ahead and simulate physics. We'll turn that one on. And then right now, it doesn't have any mass, and that's not what I want. So let's go ahead and give it some mass. So 100 is quite a bit for a book, but it's rather entertaining. So we'll go ahead and just this, and now I should be able to kind of knock it over. Hey, there it is. Now, the other one doesn't actually have simulate physics on. Each one of them is their own little instance. But there you go. This is one way that you can go ahead and bring something in from Sketchfab and bring it into the Unreal Engine, set up its materials with all of its textures, and hey, turn on physics if you really want to as well. So if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, confusions that you need cleared up so that you can continue to create, go and just leave a comment down below, and I'll get back to you when I get the chance.